When we think of the last unexplored places on Earth, we think of hacking through thick jungles or descending deep underwater. What we don't think of is a farm in upstate New York. But it was here in this field that modern day explorers have spent the last four years digging. Until one day in the summer of 2019, a truly amazing discovery was made. A cave completely untouched by man. But what did these explorers find upon entering the cave? What never before seen sights did they behold? Now, we will meet the discoverers of the cave and go deep inside to get a glimpse of this surreal subterranean landscape. They are the sources of ancient myths and legends, the hideouts of outlaws and smugglers, places of awe and wonder for explorers and curiosity seekers. They were created through a perfect combination of raw materials natural forces, and time. They are as beautiful as they are foreboding. They are caves. Now, through careful research and investigation, we will seek to reveal their forgotten stories and descend deep underground to experience their beauty and mystery firsthand. Follow along as we go in search of Caves and Legends. My name is Julian, and uh, I've been caving for about four and a half, five years. Hi, I'm Steven, uh, Steven Burke. I've been caving for about four and a half years, and uh, this dig was one of my first places that I came when I first started caving. An insurgence was found at the edge of the two square mile swamp plain that all drains into the insurgents. We always just figured that water's gotta be going somewhere and there's so much of it, and it's coming from a swamp, so there's gotta be some kind of big cave down there. One of the biggest enticers, I would say, to me was Jim Marshall telling us, so think of Hurricane Sandy. Around here, everything was flooded. He, you know, there was water where there shouldn't have been water. And this sinkhole had a lake over it. And the lake itself was a massive whirlpool, almost 100 feet in diameter, with foam spiraling around in circles. There's this sinkhole, which is about 50 feet away from the insurgents. This sinkhole was cleared out of brush. Uh, we began to dig at both the sinkhole and the insurgents. The insurgents became, uh, you know, undiggable because it gets sumped, filled up with water for most of the year. And we had dug so far that kind of dug to a point to where we couldn't keep digging underwater. So we came here to the sinkhole, tried to tackle the sinkhole for a while, then finally got the right tools, the right shoring, the right group of people, and you know, the right positive attitude, and we tackled the sinkhole dug down until we found some bedrock walls that turned out to open up into a cave. Being obsessed with something you're passionate, passionately passionate about. Passionately obsessed. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But that's what finds the cave in general, because you really do have to come out and work and work. We descend a ladder through a culvert placed to shore up loose dirt and rock, oh yeah, lots of ice. and soon find ourselves in Virgin Cave Passage. This is no man's land. And when we broke through that same day, we figured we'd not name it No Man's Land because nobody had been here before. So right here is where the cave originally ended. There's a pile of rubble coming from the sinkhole, which is up here, that it included this. So we figured if we kept moving it, we might find something. And Paul moved a bunch of rocks, then he disappeared around this corner here. And this is Hallelujah Hall. The first big room that we came out onto, we were in awe and I am still in awe of this room.
Once at the bottom of the cable ladder, we make our way into the next big dome of the cave. Welcome to the Miracle Dome. This dome was located after Hallelujah Hall, coming through the transition up there. And you stoop walk under a 10 to 20 foot passage into this massive dome. In the beginning, when we first found this cave, standing at the bottom of the stone, looking up, there was no entrance. Soon after discovery, Stephen and Julian located the position of this vertical entrance on the surface and dug it open, allowing two potential ways in and out of the cave. How many feet does it measure? 93 feet from the top of the culvert, 92 from the ground base. How would you describe the floor? Ah, non-existent. There is no floor, just clay. We push on past the Miracle Dome and soon reach the last dome of the cave, the bird's nest. Welcome to the bird's nest. This is one of our first finds in Marshall's cave. It was very enticing because it looked like continuing going passage, but it turned out to be a higher infeeder dome that runs year-round with dripping water. And in high water, has a pretty decent waterfall. We try not to disturb it, but at the same time, some of the most beautiful bones and some of the most interesting fossils were found right at the bottom of this dome. Exiting the bird's nest, we come upon a dig in progress. The diggers have been working hard and have recently reached a different layer of limestone. A layer of limestone even more conducive to the formation of caves than the one we are in now. Down here is, at the current moment, the most promising lead in the cave. It's called the slop lead. This is a little fissure that we opened up. There's a small room up there. It goes down about if you could even see me, about 15 feet below. And there's two diggers down there and they're filling buckets full of slops. So we're hoping it'll open up. We may be in the entranceway to a massive cave. But for now, we will need to wait to learn what may lie ahead as bucketful after bucketful of slop is removed. Here in Marshall's cave, we have found ourselves in a world that transcends time and space. Just 100 feet below the surface, yet so foreign an environment from the one we know. A time capsule spanning hundreds of thousands, even millions of years. Here in the cave, a large part of the Earth's history is laid bare. Cryonoid shells, fossil sponges, and coral date back hundreds of millions of years, deposited on the floor of some ancient sea. Springtails bathe in still pools. Delicate crystals that would be destroyed with so much as a touch or heavy breath may have existed here since the early days of the formation of the cave. It is a place where the past, present, and future takes on a grand and inhuman scale. On this scale of time, it was yesterday that mastodons roamed the surface where cows now graze. Stephen and Julian are confident that they have just scratched the surface of the full extent of the cave. 
There's, you know? there's more. And uh, exceed our expectations again. And they may very well be right. No one has ever said exploration was easy. It takes passion, dedication, and a whole lot of hard work. But the discovery of Marshall's Cave proves that there are still, in fact, undiscovered places just within our reach.